Speaking of LSU, was out at practice yesterday, T, and uh, it's a new team. You know, you go out there, and the, the first thing that, that you see uh, when you, you go out and watch LSU football for the first time is that there's no Burrow, there's no Delphit, yep. there's none of these, these standout guys. Rashard Lawrence, you talk about some of these leaders uh, that, that were there during that championship run, it's, it's turned over, and, and you see the new faces. And the, 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 the coach that stood out to me, um, and, and again, this was indoor yesterday, and anybody that's, that's watched a practice indoor, it's tough to kind of see everything compared to being on the Ponderosa because it's being so spread out and there's usually individual units on certain practice fields so you know where to kind of put, you know, put your eyeballs and, and find the defensive line and find the DBs and find the wide receivers. When it's inside, they're all kind of on top of each other. They're all on, on one field. In fact, they took the defensive yeah, line great. outside. Uh, they weren't even working out indoors because it was, it was a little sunny in the afternoon. Um, and so yeah, they, they, have that, they have that little turf area too so, yeah, outside and, and, where you can do D line like firing off. You can do individual drills out there basically. And Bill Johnson took his group out there for uh, for their their workouts yesterday at the start of practice. And the first thing that jumped out to me from a coaching standpoint was that Kevin Falk is tremendous. Really, just the control he has over everything that he says, from the way that he carries himself to every message that he has for his group. And his group has got great competition. I yes. mean, when you looked at those three guys going through the reps yesterday, I will say this, that every time Miles Brennan took a rep, Chris Curry took a rep. So okay. it seemed like he was, Curry you know, maybe first in line, and that would make sense. Yeah, it's early spring. You want a storyline to take away from it, but every rep that Brennan took, Curry was with him. Well, and, and just look at last season, right? Uh, by, by years in, although TDP was kind of the man during the majority of the season, uh, in that in, in that Peach Bowl, look, look at who was getting the first team reps. It was Curry, and, and that's because – you know, reports are that he just kind of kept his head down. Uh, like like any of these other guys that came along late in the season, a Maurice Hampton, a Cordell Flott, kept his head down, practiced his ass off, was winning these practice reps, proved he got a chance. And then when Curry got a chance in the game, he was excellent. Yeah, He was excellent. Now, I fully expect all three guys to play. Like, maybe it ends up like last year where you just hit a fab five and mm-hmm. all you do is have the same three receivers, the same tight end, the same running back. I doubt that's the case. Uh, but that's, that's, it's good to hear for Curry, a guy who looked like he was going to maybe be buried for his entire career on the depth chart for a second there. Now now he's fighting for those reps. And if you do a little digging and you ask around some of the, the, the people in the building that pay attention or close to Curry, Kevin Falk was very instrumental in kind of getting him out of that funk last season and getting him an opportunity late in the season and keeping him ready when his time was called and his number was called to get in there and be productive. So... Um, the, the running back, first and foremost, uh, great competition and an excellent leader in Kevin Falk. For yeah. anybody that's out there doubting the inexperience of Falk, and I don't know if anybody in this listening audience will do that just because of his legendary status of what he brings in, but he passes everything from a coach standpoint, too. I mean, he is the, the way that he, he carries himself to the respect that you see the players have from him in delivering his message. He is, like Ogeron said here two weeks ago, an absolute home run hire. When you shift your eyes to the quarterback, like I said yesterday on Moscona show, I'll reiterate here, Miles Brennan's ready to go. It's his time. He it is. looks like that. You, you get that feeling. It, it Just by the way that he carries himself. I mean, to, to talk about the way that you look at Falk and he looks confident in the way that he coaches his group, you shift your eyes to Miles Brennan and see the way that he's playing under center. He looks confident in playing that position, and I think it was tremendous for him in the storyline of the silver lining last year of Joe Burrow and how excellent he was and how great he was at playing that position on the college football level was that Miles Brennan had a front row seat and was in his ear every single day. He was his road roommate. They stayed together on the road, which was tremendous to go into talking about what Burrow put into game night preparation or pregame night preparation, night before game as far as getting ready to go, watching film, questions that he had for the coaches, things that he was looking for, things that he was thinking about in the 11th hour about getting ready for a big game. Miles Brennan was sitting right next to him the entire time. One of the biggest attributes of Burrow, everything that we hear from Burrow, the way that LSU fell in love with Burrow was the three-hour meeting on his recruiting visit two years ago, and the reason why was because of Burrow's ability to watch film. Miles Brennan's been sitting next to Burrow the last two years watching him digest, break down film, seeing yeah. what he's looking for. Brennan now sees that when he gets out to the practice field, and he's added 20 pounds. Shout out to Tommy Moffat and his staff. Always. That is a great testament 
of what they're doing over there, really and truly. I mean, when you looked at Miles Brennan two years ago, when it was being discussed that he was going to be the starting quarterback next to Justin McMillan before we even knew that Joe Burrow was an option, you didn't even we didn't even know that two springs ago. It was going to be Justin McMillan or Miles Brennan. When everybody looked at Brennan, whether it was the coaching staff, his teammates, the media, the fans, the biggest concern was how the hell is he going to make it through a schedule? I mean, from a physical standpoint, he's going to get snapped, right? 25 pounds later, he looks like a college football quarterback. I mean, he, he looks, looks better like than that. He ready. looks like a prototype. He does. Uh, he looks like a, how, how you would, if you were going to design a college football quarterback in a computer, you would probably design him to look like Miles Brennan. And then when you look at the wide receivers and the options that he has, T. That's, and, I mean, that, and that's going to help. Like, whew, I mean, if they can get this offensive line figured out, the they, they love tackle, Joe Evans. Left tackle scary. I hate the fact that Dare Rosenthal is missing all these snaps, yep. all these reps, him, him being away from the team. But by all accounts, he'll be back in the summer, plugged yeah, in at we, left tackle. But, but, ready. We, but I want to jump in on this left tackle point because we talked about this a bit yesterday on the whole That Podcast podcast, right? And like, Sure, Dare Rosenthal, maybe he comes back ready to roll, but there's just there's no guarantee as to how a guy responds to when he's away from the team. A lot of guys do it correctly, right? Ed Ingram did it correctly. Um, I think Michael Divinity actually handled it, handled his situation correctly last season. But but it's easy to go when you're like if you're already struggling in that structure, and then you remove that structure, some rapid maturity has to take place if you're going to come back ready, and, and so. I, I hope I'm with you, Jordy. I hope that Dare Rosenthal yeah. does the right things and he comes back and he's ready to go. But there is no doubt that that is a point of concern when you're working in a new quarterback and you have big question marks at left tackle. Enormous. And 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 Cam Wire. I mean, you know, let's let's see what Cam Wire can do. And if you're Cam Wire, this is your opportunity. This is spring. Like you, you it, it, the door is open. Okay, now you just have to go step through it. Dumervillo had a chance too. When he gets in in the summertime, I mean, as a true freshman, he'll have a chance to compete for for that left tackle spot because of the 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 the, the vacancy yeah. that that Rosenthal has left behind. And I'm like you, Wire has a great chance. Here's an opportunity of a lifetime: can you play or can you not play? You got 15 practices, or now you got 13 practices. And then see, you look at the wide receivers and you look at the options, and we'll get to some of the defense. But I mean, the the, the top two at that position, the I, best I know I'm combo biased. In the country. I mean, good. Goodness gracious, Especially with man. the Alabama I mean, guys gone and C.D. Lamb gone. It's the best, it's the best combo in the country, there's look no doubt. It, bro. I mean, like Chase and Marshall just a couple of weeks, just a couple of, of, of weeks removed from playing. And, and then past that, John Trey Kirkland to me is a dark horse at this wide receiver spot. Because I do think that oh, Racy wow. McMath is the third guy and Trey Palmer after that is the one that everybody's looking at. Yeah. Right? And, and then Kayshawn Butte, I think, will have an opportunity when he comes in. But just because of he's a dynamic playmaker. I mean, he's one of these cats that you can throw a screen route to and, you know, five seconds later the scoreboards change from anywhere on the field. But watch out for John Trey Kirkland. Like, really, like, to, to me, he, he's kind of one of these he, – he, he does the dirty work. He does kind of no, all the No, he's done everything the, the team's stuff. asked him but to for then, years. But, but then you see him in line next, next to all these guys, and it's like, well, damn – 13 can play, too. Well, what, what what I want to see is, or what I'm intrigued to see as this year goes on, last year, like I said, the LSU found an exploit in their 11 personnel because they didn't have to sub. Yeah. They could just have their top three receivers. You can go five, Bad right? Moss in the field and Clyde edwards dealer and you were good to go. And that led to just, like I said, constant 11 personnel. Do you go more four wide this season? Under the hand, do you go more five wide? If the receiver group is that deep, but then you're still going to have Eric Gilbert that you want to get involved. Yeah. So, like, that's a good problem to have. Okay, the, the cup overfloweth T, right now. Talk about opportunities in what about spring. Cole Taylor? Cole Taylor. You know why? Because the only person he's going up against is fifth-year tight end Jamal Pettigrew. Yeah. Gilbert's out, standing on the sideline, and he looks the part, right? I mean, like— How does Taylor look? look? He looks, he's mean, a tall boy. Even huh? in a sling, he looks like a first-round pick today. No, not Eric Gilbert. Cole Taylor. Like, dude, like, like a he's great six, seven, option. Right? He's six, a seven, great right? option. Six seven. He's athletic. He is. Uh, he he catches the ball. I mean, you know, they're just going through the route tree. But he's a six seven foot frame that you can use as a target in a position that LSU has now started to develop as a threat. Yeah. I mean, like the tight end position is now some like forgotten about position at LSU. I mean, you look at Thad Moss's production, then you bring in guys like Gilbert, and then you look at Taylor. Man, the red zone threats that they have and the size they could they could box you out inside the twenty. I, mean, yeah. I don't know how you can get around Taylor or Gilbert when you just put those guys on, on, on slots and run them just straight vertical inside the red zone. It just 
A lot of options for Brennan's, good. right? Yeah, yeah, good. But you got to protect man. him. And that's where this O line, that's the biggest question mark right now. They got to figure it out. And the best option on offense is Jamar Chase. 